Well, welcome to the showcase photo and video training module printing made easy from Photoshop to Epson printers and uh, featuring the high dynamic range HDR printers 4900, 7900 and the 9900 we'll talk about some of the similarities and differences but it all begins with Photoshop and um, we hope this is going to be informative and help you through um, what to some people would uh, think is a daunting experience from the very beginning. As you can see we have CS5 Photoshop open uh, very much similar to the previous versions of Photoshop in this particular area. So let's begin by going into our files and we can open and find our file or be a little lazy and pick it up from open recent and welcome to the bikers. Uh, this is an image that we will review here by going under image and image size and we see that the file native from the camera, in this case it's a point and shoot, uh, is 20 plus inches by 15 plus inches. We would prefer to print that at 11 by something under eight and a half and that way uh, we would like to have our image set up in Photoshop for uh, all ready to print at 100% of the size that it is in Photoshop. Now let's talk a little bit about resolution. Uh, you notice, uh, I hope, that originally this file was a 180 pixels per inch, uh, but because we have, we have shrunk the image while deselecting the resample, we want, want no resampling to take place. We neither want to add pixels or reduce pixels. We want all the native pixels or picture elements that have come, that have been recorded on the chip of the camera to remain intact. But we do request, uh, so that the image will fit on 8.5 by 11, that the pixels shrink themselves. And by choosing 8, 11 by 8.5 with no resampling, the pixels resize physically down to enough to give us 331 pixels per inch. We're simply squeezing the same number of pixels in a smaller area, which means we have more per inch. With that done, let's rotate the image, which I think is advisable for novice intermediate printers until you get more comfortable with it. If we rotate, it takes out some confusion about format to the paper when we go to print. So either uh, and we're only rotating to get a, a, a landscape picture in a, a, a vertical portrait uh, position. To complete this process, go up into View and Set uh, Fit on Screen, which will just give us command of the entire visual as we proceed. So now we have a portrait picture, even though it will sit on the page landscape. Uh, it will be a horizontal when we're done printing. But from here on out, we now go to our printing commands. So we go to uh, go to uh, file, sorry, print, and we can use the Control P as a shortcut on the keyboard. Brings up this particular screen, and this will drive all of our printing to completion. Obviously, fit, first select the printer. We have a variety of printers on this machine. We will use the 4900, the 17-inch wide, uh, somewhat desktop, oversized desktop printer from Epson. Brand new technology just this year. Next, move right along into printer, print settings. And when we do that, we get another window that we need to address. And we do that by basically picking our paper. And in this case, we are going to use Photo Luster. Uh, we could, of course, come down and pick an enhanced matte, a popular paper as well, on the matte side. If we were to do so, you would notice that this, you will notice that this matte black changes from photo black. And that is because this is a general description of all of the aspects of printing on a matte paper. It makes decisions for us. But in this case, we want to come back and put it on the luster and that automatically resets our black to photo black. This is not an ICC profile. It is very confusing to people thinking they've selected the paper and that includes the profile. It does not. We'll see that shortly. 
Move on to color. We only have two choices, advanced black and white, which we will uh, present in a second video, and color. And then the all-important quality. If we open up quality and go to quality options, we then see five degrees or differences choices for quality. Of course, five is the highest, 2880 over 1440, incredible detail, but really hard to perceive the differences between 1440 and 2880. Uh, I personally like to use 2880 when I have black and white uh, prints that have a preponderance of black, solid black backgrounds. I tend to get a completely, completely smooth, error-free print when I choose 2880, but it is slow and you will find as you test both of these qualities that the 720 by 1440 is great. I click the finest detail because I would like detail. Uh, I don't think there's anything magical about these numbers. You may want to play with those as, as well to see how you uh, uh, anticipate or view the differences. Quality is chosen. Here is one of the two most important decisions. Uh, nothing well can be done without this. We all, you may see it default to automatic. Click to custom. In the custom controls you have the opportunity to completely disable color management in the printer dialog box. That's what we want. No color management as we will apply color management through ICC profiles in Photoshop. This is the one and only way to print. On the 4900, our, our paper source, it's important to be in harmony with the printer setup. And we have a choice of manual feed on the top, paper cassette, which is terrific on the 4900. Other larger format printers don't have this option. And then, of course, we can put roll paper in that 4900 as well as the 79 and 9900. In this case, we'll do the manual feed, which is one sheet at a time, as opposed to multiple sheets in a cassette. And then we select our paper size. These are all self-explanatory, but remember that we're not talking about image size here. We are talking about the actual paper that you're going to be using to print on. And you may want to get an oversized paper, 17 by 22, and then float in the middle of it an, an 8 and a half uh, by 11. That's completely suitable to center that on it if you always want a larger paper and a smaller image. In this case, we'll go to a traditional 8.5 by 11, and we are not going to talk borderless yet. Borderless is a little bit more complicated. If my printer had b been hooked up at the time of this video training program being prepared, it would be reporting back to this window the ink levels just to give you a little more advantage on what those levels are. Okay, with all of that set, we've made the critical decisions, and you'll see over and over again that we have the off-color management. Very, very important at this point. Click OK, and we return to our whole print window. I'd like to stop here a little bit and say, obviously, you can check this to center the image. Uh, you can move this image around and recenter it if there was reason to do so. But in order to do that, your bounding box must be selected. If it's not selected, I can clip, press down on my mouse and nothing happens. As soon as I activate bounding box, I can move my picture. However, in this particular case, you, uh, you will find that uh, advantageous in, in the future, uh, particularly if you're blowing it up on screen. If you go to 200% under the scale of the print, then of course we might want to knock out one of the characters uh, in the portrait and um, sort of net that out through cropping. Don't I don't really advise this uh, too often. Uh, we'd like to set it up and do our cropping individually. So here we are centering our image and setting the scale back to 100%. We'll, we can leave the bounding box on. Check match print colors gamut and show paper white. Keep those checked as you go. Now to the most important single decision. And that is to allow Photoshop this choice of color handling. We've already told the printer we don't want it to get involved in the, in the color management. We don't want the drivers uh, to the Epson printer making decisions. We want Photoshop to manage the color. And when we do that, 
we get the option to select a particular ICC profile. Now whether you inherit these profiles or make them, which is quite possible with some of the new user-friendly software from XWrite called iPhoto Pro, you may indeed want to make unique profiles for your machine and your paper choices. But in the meantime, and quite suitably, Epson will provide the common papers. In particular, here's our luster. We go to that profile, select it, and now we have linked the what we call printer profile, others call it output profile. That's the profile or the filter through which our image will pass to adapt itself to that particular paper and the particular printer. These are very unique and they are unique to color space and they're unique to DPI. Typically these are made at 1440 DPI which is the resolution that we are printing in. The choice of perceptual and relative color metric may vary depending upon, you may study this in greater detail, the amount of adjustment that is being made for out of gamut colors. But for the time being you'll feel safe, uh, it'll be safe to print in relative color metric and yet many choose perceptual. It's your choice and again you want to get used to what those differences might mean to your particular image as you're testing. And that's it. it uh, we made it pretty easy even though it looks like a lot of information. Uh, then click print and we have completed our print. In this particular case the print is just a little bit larger than the paper that we're printing on. Uh, if it was a borderless print we would not see this message. But you know that it's a small amount of image that's been cropped out by the edge of the paper. And we then can proceed and print. And I believe you'll be quite happy with the results of this uh, uh, printing uh, tutorial. And uh, we will come back with future items such as black and white specialization. And we'll want to talk a little bit more about uh, color space uh, as we pursue uh, the best color space now, dis uh, now determined pro photo RGB used uh, as the input profile or the working profile for images that are being processed from RAW. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about those profiles in later videos. This will get you started and get you great results, whatever profile you're printing from. Thank you very much.